Hey, good evening, everyone. Thanks for tuning in to this somewhat rare evening edition of a, a J Hood Creative uh, YouTube show. Usually we do an issue at hand in the evenings, but usually we're doing a Saturday morning show. But tonight we're special. We're celebrating a special event. It's uh, it's my anniversary this week. Mine too. And Coach Vicks. That's not what we're celebrating. Well, we kind of are. I mean, mine was yesterday. Yours is tomorrow. Yep. <laughs> and we're not married to each other. Let's get that straight. Mm -hmm. But uh, it, Coach Vic's wife was kind enough to, su me. to supply him with the funds to invest in a mystery box. And this is the first mystery box either of us have looked into. Uh, I've got my own feelings about mystery boxes. It's not that I look down on them in any way. But if I'm going to spend the money, I'm going to spend it specifically on the books I'm after. But there are other collectors that are have a little bit wider approach to things, and especially a newer creator or collector like Coach Vic, but where he doesn't have stacks and stacks of comics already. He's still kind of finding his way, trying to find what he's interested in. Mystery Box, I think, is a great way to get started. So, I mean, that was my whole thought, too. I'm like, you know, I'm new. I really don't know what to get. I mean, as we've been, I've been to at least one show with you and I walked around there and I was just like, what am I here for? Yeah. <laughs> and, um, and actually I've actually somewhat developed some of a philosophy for getting the books, but we'll, we'll talk about that in a, in a week or so. And actually I came up with that after I ordered the <laughs> three box. <laughs> and uh, so, you know, my wife was like, we were just talking about things to get for our anniversary and she mentioned something that she wanted. And then she mentioned me getting one of these. I'm like, oh, that'd be great. And um, she's seen um, the boy who had seven open up Jack B's box, boxes. She said, why don't you get one of those? I said, okay. And so I sent him a message, and he sent me back a link. And um, he sent me back. He was doing a really special one that was $200 box. I said, yeah. And I was like, no. <laughs> <laughs> and so we worked something out. It's really cool because he sends you a list of stuff, and you write down. Know, kind of what you like, and I've, I'm assuming he tries to fit that in with what you are, and I, I'm not sure if he gave, you well, know, he was right there, he could tell us. I'm not sure if he gave money from this to to um, uh, the charity, Feeding America, I think, but I think it's pretty cool that's what he does with the other ones anyway, so. Yes, uh, speaking of Jack B, he is in the chat. Thanks for being here, Jack, and Rob Boswell is also in the chat. Thanks for joining us, guys. And uh, we look forward to having you along as we dive into this. So is there anything that, okay, so you've watched Boy Had 7 open a few boxes. Have you watched anyone else open mystery boxes? Yeah. Um, wow. You're going to ask me for names now. I can't, oddly enough, I can't remember anybody's name. But. Like uh, Discovery Bay has done a few, yeah. a few shows where he's opened a bunch of different boxes. Yeah, to compare. every day now. Because <laughs> like this afternoon. See, my wife, she lets me watch some shows and while she's hanging on her phone or something, and she looks up, she goes, what's all that stuff behind them? So, all oh, those are boxes that he got that he hasn't opened yet. So you're never getting to that point. <laughs> <laughs> if you buy something, you're opening it. And I was like, well, I'm supposed to get the box from Jack B this afternoon. She said, well, I know you and Jamie are going to work something out, so that's okay. <laughs> uh, I, I've There have been a few times where I've gotten – packages in off eBay where I'm like, yeah, I can suffer through and leave them sealed until the next Saturday show comes and I open a few. But yeah, generally I'm I got it's like kid on Christmas morning. I'm not gonna wait. <laughs> right. So I'm glad we could uh could schedule this tonight and be able to take a look. Boy had seven. Hey, we were just talking about you brother. Thanks for joining us. So and, and the best part about opening with you is one well, you're my friend. Yay. But <laughs> but like I said, I'm new. I'm probably not going to do a half these books or as I told you earlier, but I'm looking forward to it. <laughs> I am too. I mean, there, there's something for me, there's something cathartic about going to uh, like, a, like a thrift shop or something like that. And you find just a soul box of comics and it doesn't matter what's in it, but just flipping through and you might walk away with nothing, but just to, or you meet a friend where he's like, here, I've got this box of comics. You want to look through it? And you're like, yeah, let's <laughs> dive in. It's what, to me, one of the best feelings 
uh, I get out of the hobby is just looking at comics and yeah, thinking through, okay, yeah, I know what the significance of this is. I know that artist, I know when that book came out, things like that. So yeah, I'm looking forward to this as much as you are, I think. All right. We've got Hialeah Comic Bro joining us. Thanks for joining us, Hialeah. All right, you ready to start? Let's start. All right. Let's see what the first book is. So this is the Jack B box. Back to nice home. Ooh, stickers. stickers. You know who love these. <laughs> Me. <laughs> what, who do you know that loves stickers? Ow. True. But he ain't getting them. <laughs> There's some cool stickers. Of Hulk, show, show, or Hulk, oh, Hulk. yeah. Yeah. I have no clue who they are. Well, you got the Avengers cartoons oh. down there. Oh, yeah. You got the DC superhero girl. Almost looks kind of like a Sky Young cover. Am I right? Is I that gonna, right? I ain't going to be shy. I'm going to bust this open. Is that right? Uh, I don't think they're Scott Young, but they're like... Yeah, I said it looks like it. Yeah. Whew. Got some turtles in there. T-U-R-T-L-E power. You, you know, I'm all about the Batman. You know, I'm all about power. Is this Power Man? Yep. Luke yeah. Cage. Got Spidey. Ooh. That's a cool Deadpool. I have to figure out how to put these on a mug. Here you go. This is your guy. Da, 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 Batman. A flash action. Those are cool. Ooh, is that cane pool over there? It does bear a striking resemblance. <laughs> All right, I'll load these back in for you. All right. Oh, okay. <laughs> we talked about so there's three packages in here. All right. It's funny. Look at that one. We talked about that one last week. <laughs> he made. He might have watched the show. Uh, we are watchable, right? Let's see. Rob Boswell knows what I'm talking about. Let me tell you. I like Coach Vic is one of the best people, best human beings I know. Oh, thank you. Oh, yeah. See, I like the Green Hornet. Is that right? That is the Green Hornet. It's published by Now Comics, which is now defunct. But <laughs> yeah, I was going to say it's from the early 90s. Yeah, it's got a 91... Uh, on the signature, so they adjust our lighting for the glare. There we go. All right. Deathmate. Deathmate Blue. <laughs> okay, so the the epitome of the '90s is Deathmate <laughs> because it, it was the crossover between Valiant and Image, and the delays caused by Deathmate are blamed for uh or partly to blame for the implosion of the industry in the 90s you know i love green empire lanes i know nothing <laughs> it's by uh key line books it looks very very independent it's a cool cool book though sword cover sewer cover the oh. Gay Blade Riding Blade. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's the real Zorro. <laughs> On skis. I never knew he skied. <laughs> <laughs> he says he's still called the Gay Blade. I, don't... I think that was just one movie. Oh, okay. From Paper Cuts. It's 231 and the battle continues. Is this the Terminator? Yes, this is from... Now Comics, also the same that uh, published uh, the Green Hornet. This was the first series that, uh, or the first Terminator comic book series. Nice. Number 11. Top Cow. I like this. This looks pretty cool. Looks like uh, Neil Adams must have did that art because of some nice looking black people. <laughs> I got to let that go, right? <laughs> I read an article. Neil Adams said that he draws black people better than anybody. 
So what we have here is Vice number one by Top Cow and Image. Uh, so Top Cow was Mark Silvestri, still is Mark Silvestri's studio. And it's Tyler Kirkham did the, did the interiors. Tyler Kirkham is well known now for, I think, for his uh, art in some DC comics. Nice. Um, roll by number four. Hey, I'm starting to get the hang of this number thing. I might have number one through three. <laughs> and Hector Silva and Mike Miller. So uh, our own Ben Avery that teams up with us on uh, Issue at Hand uh, worked with this publisher alias during this time. So I, that's why I was checking the uh, oh, credits. Wow, okay. Go ahead, Ben Avery original. Yep. Soul Fire Zero. All right, so this is from Aspen Comics. It's a Michael Turner cover. TJ the Slab Dragon Watson, big Michael Turner fan. <laughs> so there you've got a dragon cover for your Comigories. We've got uh, Comics on the Mind joining us. Superhero Reviews has joined us. Matthew Poe has joined us as well. Good to see you, Matthew. Let's see if I missed anybody. Looks like that's it. Hey, thanks for tuning in, guys. This is exciting watching Coach Vic open his first mystery box. Z Zillion? E zillion or just zillion by E? Zillion by E eternity. Again, I got nothing. <laughs> uh, very independent. This looks like it'd be from the early 90s, possibly late 80s, even. <laughs> nice. Uh, two, a, a 250 color price cover price, it'd be in the 90s. Let's see. I know this is making you drive me batty. I'm taking so long to do this, right? No. Let's see. I have a letter here. I've never seen him cry, so this might be it. <laughs> you never seen me cry? No. Oh, please. You, yeah. Okay. Uh, uh -huh. Jack P. Jack P. says these are not part of the box. So is it, oh, okay. So then I should put this aside for now. Well, need some clarification on that. Is this is not these are not part of the box? Does that mean just this one package? Okay. So I want you to thank you for ordering my second mystery box, supporting Feed the Children. Fifteen dollars from your purchase went to Feed the Children. And I'll tell you what, they always prefer to give them cash because they can do so much more money with your. They can do so much more with your money than they can with products. By the way, since you're new to comics, welcome to the family. The comic community on YouTube is awesome. It is. I sent you an AOK. -okay. The box full of comics is comprised of Marvel, DC, and Independence. Hopefully, you'll find some titles you enjoy. And some maybe you can send an AOK -okay to someone else who may be new to comics. Thank you. That's really nice. I hand picked your comic. The Captain America issue is the second appearance of the Falcon, and Daredevil 69 has the Black Panther as a guest star in the comic. Thank you. Spoilers. Oh, is that what that was? <laughs> oh, thanks. All right. You on? All Jack, right. Jack, Jack said, read the bottom of the note. And again, thank you for your business and support. <laughs> you got the right, the part about the AOK. -okay. Yeah. I mean, uh, Rob Boswell is asking the question, does Coke Vic know what an AOK -okay is? And that is one of the first <laughs> lessons I was sure to uh, educate him on. I don't know what AOK -okay stands for. <laughs> but act of kindness. Act of kindness. Okay. See, in student ministry, we have what we call AWOL, a work of love. Okay. But AOK, -okay, all right. So just, you can't go around saying AWOK, AOK. <laughs> Jeez. Guess right, your parents live. Guess wrong, they die. Superboy. I, like that. The st I was going to say, the stakes are high, and it's the poker cover. <laughs> it's a cool Superboy. It looks like it might be a Neil Adams cover. Uh, I doubt he did the interiors, but he did the cover. <laughs> 
cap. There you go. Second appearance of the Falcon. That's a great comic for you, Victor. <laughs> it is. Yeah. Nice. Thank you. It's in nice condition. This is the this is the condition of Silver Age book I look for. Where it's got the edges are nice and crisp. The corners not a lot of problems, but you'll sell for a little fault here and there, like that that crease right there. Doesn't kill the overall look of the book. It's not all cracked up. It's a nice looking copy, man. Nice. Daredevil, a man without fear. And the king. I don't <clears throat> I don't recognize the cover artist on this one, but yeah. 15 <laughs> cent daredevil. And there he is. Black Panther there. Cool. Fantastic Four, 136. No, no com collections complete unless you have a Fantastic Four in it. So, yeah. Is that why you passed on it? Why well, I passed on it? <laughs> in comic glories. <laughs> no, I, I passed on it because I didn't know what uh, Captain Comics had up his sleeve. <laughs> I could have won that category. Thor, and what's the name of that hammer that he carries with him? Mjolnir. <laughs> Mjolnir. It, it, how many ways can you pronounce it? I mean, there are a bunch. It's a cool cover. Thor. Again, condition of these books is really nice. Perfectly collectible, in my opinion. Nice. Thank you. And, um... Strange Tales 147. That looks like a Jack Kirby cover. Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., and you'll find a a uh, Doctor Strange story in there as well. Strange Ooh. Tales was one part Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., and one part uh, Doctor Strange. Nice. And Doctor Strange is, I'm not sure how, how long they lasted, but were usually by Steve Ditko in the era. Oh, I read something about him while doing my research. <laughs> <laughs> What, like he, he was the other influential artist at, at Marvel that Stanley took all the credit for. Yeah, something like that. <laughs> but uh, that reminded me, I was I was reading that Samuel L. Jackson sued <laughs> Marvel, and that's how he got into the movies uh, because I read that that they used his likeness in the picture in the book. Okay. <laughs> Tri trivia question for the chat for those okay so Samuel Jackson was cast as Nick Fury because uh, what's his name wasn't David Finch Hitch Brian Hitch drew the character of Nick Fury to look like Samuel Jackson trivia question for the chat who did they originally draw Nick Fury to look like what other what? African American <laughs> actor, were they originally drawing him to look like? I don't know. He's from Africa. <laughs> I said African American. Yes. Can I so, tell him where his hometown is? No. Okay. So we'll let, we'll let the chat the chats too on that. And when I see some some guesses pop up, I'll acknowledge him. <laughs> we were talking about this the um, the other week, the other Saturday. Yep. That's from <laughs> the the West Coast Avengers run, John Byrne. Awesome run to have. I've got it. So nice. this, the, this guy right here, I, I believe, is the Vision. He's kind of the stripped-down version. Oh. Hi, Leia. Yeah. <laughs> Does that say Danny DeVito? <laughs> Danny DeVito. Incorrect. <laughs> Captain William Shatner. Incorrect. Uh, okay. You know you say it was black, right? <laughs> William Shatner is Nick Fury. That would be interesting. Squadron well, Supreme. I mean, Nick Fury was, was originally white. Oh, yeah. I mean, yeah. So, in, I believe this issue, as foretold on the cover, has the death of Namor, only for Namor to be resurrected shortly thereafter. Namor. The Submariner. Okay. I'm like, I've heard this name like a lot lately. <laughs> Her. Hervé Villachez. Yeah, I, no. That, that's still incorrect. Wow. It's going to tell a lie right here on the cover of this book, huh? 
the world's greatest superhero. <laughs> Even though it looks like a, a magazine cover. <laughs> it does. It looks really cool. It's like Vegas. <laughs> Issue of Spider-Man. <laughs> I can't see it. Oh. Ooh. Gary Coleman. A little taller. <laughs> taller. What you talking about, Wills? Nah, I don't do that for free normally, but you know, it's the bane of my youth. Youth, Victor, you look just like Gary Coleman. Go ahead, say what you talking about, Wills. Come on, come on, Arnold. <laughs> yeah, I might got into a few fights over that. <laughs> Sounds like fighting words to me. X Man, is that what that is? Yep. <laughs> X-Man he was a uh, X-Man is Nathan Summers who was also Cable but from a different timeline X-Man comes from the what was the name of that storyline uh, I'm, I'm blanking <laughs> as I will when I'm live oh, oh. you know I love me some S.H.I.E.L.D. I feel like I'm the only person watch that, TV, that watches the TV show <laughs> Nick Fury, Agent of S.H.I.E.L.D., number two. Martin is actually a closer... I mean, you're getting warmer. Martin. You're getting warmer. Martin. Speaking of Martin, Bad Boys for Life was great. No. You know. <laughs> All right, talk to me about this. It's a 1.2. I've never seen a number 1 point anything. Okay, so every once in a while, the publishers will do that where they break out like, I know DC did it with all their titles where they put uh, the lenticular covers, and I think they did like five point or point yada yada issues of like Batman where they had five different lenticular Batman covers. <laughs> okay. So it, it's it's just a, a marketing ploy uh, to publish extra comics in a year. Okay. Nice. And this is the. Uh, who, we we have a winner. Colin Powell. Oh. <laughs> Will Smith. Nah, 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 nah. They were Tom Rainey was drawing uh, Nick Fury to look like Will Smith in the early issues, uh, early appearances. <laughs> this looks like the Backstreet Boys here. Aren't they the ones that have the music video? Is this like? Is he the puppet master? Is that his name? Uh, I'll go with yes. I, I honestly don't know. <laughs> There is a villain called the Puppet Master, but I don't know if it's this guy. That's a cool cover, New Warriors. So <clears throat> these are the New new Warriors. You've got Namorita. <clears throat> Namorita? Yep. In relation to the Submariner? Of course. See, uh, I did that. <laughs> Speedball, uh, Nova, uh, Dark Hawk. Nova, I almost bought a Nova book tonight. Is it the Thrasher or Night Thrasher or something like that? This this dude in the black suit back there. Huh. Yeah, I, I, this is a a title that I was I was too old to get into New Warriors when they were new. <laughs> really? They were kind of Marvel's version of Teen Titans, except they weren't the the characters weren't as connected to the universe as Teen Titans were to to DC. The Generation X. Generation X number two. Now I I like this book right here. It's by the art is by Chris Bacallo or Bacallo. I've never heard the correct uh, pronunciation of it, but uh, yeah, the art in it is very interesting, very detailed, kind of dark and moody, somewhat cartoony. Uh, stylized is the artistic term. Ooh, look, guest stars. Dark Hawk and Namor guest stars in this issue of the New Warriors, and they can't say Namorita. By the way, is the villain's name Sea Urchin? Please don't let that. <laughs> I'll go with yes. Ooh. Hey, we've got Carolina Chris joining us. Mark Knapp 68 joining us. Thanks for thanks for stopping in, guys. Yeah, thanks for showing up, fellas and fellettes. <laughs> Nam. The Nam. The first 12 issues of this, this is issue 17, and I'm not sure who the cover artist is on it, but it's quality. 
but the first 12 issues were drawn by a guy named Michael Golden, who was big in the Silver Age, or the Bronze Age. And uh, the, the, the thing about the NAM was that they would do, they were covering Viet, the war in Vietnam and kind of in real time. So with each issue, a month of time went by. Oh, okay. And as sales went on, they did things like brought in the Punisher to make appearances, Frank Castle, you know, pre, pre Punisher. But uh, after the 12, first 12 issues, it kind of went downhill art wise for me. So I've stopped. But mm. if, if all the, the art had looked like this, I probably would have continued. In those eyes, a thousand yard stare. <laughs> it begins here Vision Quest. Very nice. So this goes along with the earlier copy of West Coast Avengers you showed. Again, it's John Byrne. I believe this is the first issue John Byrne did on the title. And uh, the things they dig into are like the the true origin of the vision. Everything you know about the vision is wrong. I mean, I've gotten a lot of books so far, haven't I? It's a nice stack. I still got more to go. <laughs> That's what we're looking at so far. Good size stack. Jack B. Weren't you talking about getting this for me a couple weeks ago? I was talking about getting this for my girls, but I advise <laughs> any comic book uh, collector to have the Muhatmu, the official handbook of the Marvel Universe, wherein they have like a one page summary. Sometimes, if you've got a long history, they've got two pages on you of each character in the Marvel Universe. They have like the they describe your superpowers, your history, your background, mother's maiden name, <laughs> height and weight, that kind of thing. Wow, the new warriors with Terax, that one time was a herald of Galactus. Herald, you worked for Galactus, basically. Or? Yeah, the Silver okay. Surfer was original, was the first herald of Galactus. Okay. So when Galactus is coming to eat your planet, he's sending a herald to oh. say, he's coming to eat you. Okay. But that also has the Fantastic Four in it. Of course, they're not far behind the, fit, the Silver Surfer. Well, the Silver Surfer's not in there. It's just the Fantastic Four's in there. And this? And a surprise guess, guest. Guest starring. The Fantastic Four and a surprise hero. Can we find who the surprise hero is? I see. This looks cool. Ooh. <laughs> okay. This this I don't, I'm not gonna skip ahead to the next one. Let's not spoil that. But this is a cool one. Spider Boy team up. So this is part of Amalgam Comics or Amalgam. I call them Amalgam because I say theater instead of theater. <laughs> And tomato? <laughs> no. Tomatoes. But uh, the Amalgam universe was where Marvel and DC, on one of their rare uh, occasions, teamed up and they mushed their characters together. I was reading about that. There was an article today that said that, they're never do that they'll never do that again. <laughs> but Yeah, very unlikely. But money always makes things happen. So in this case, they mushed up Spider-Man and Superboy. Sweet to make Spider Boy, and this features the Legion of the Galactic Guardians 2099, which would have been a mix between Legion of Superheroes and Guardians of the Galaxy. I'm guessing Ooh. But that looks like it leans much closer on the, the uh, Legion of Superheroes, which are the, the DC characters. I like it, I do too. I like it a lot. I also like this an awful lot too. All right. <laughs> the Punisher crackdown. That is a cool cover. The guy in the background looks a little bit like Blade, but I don't think it is. I'm trying to. <laughs> Trying to name the artist looks a little bit like uh, uh, Klaus Jansen, maybe. I'm not sure. Klaus Jansen, who worked with Frank Miller on Daredevil and then went on to do his own things on things like The Punisher and other books. 
Rob, Rob Boswell is complimenting my T-shirt. Thank you, sir. I've got one for every day of the week for two or three weeks. <laughs> like when I started, I was getting ready to leave tonight. I'm like, what's cold outside? Like, I don't know when the last time I wore pants. <laughs> The last stack. Captain Comics is joining us. Good to see you, matey. Well, wait. Jack B, I'll tell you, I know nothing about books, but this is an amazing box. Thank you for uh, all the extra work you did in this. <laughs> I like how this one's starting. Me too. Because you know, I'm working on a run of Legion of Superheroes. Oh, you are? Yep. What number I, yet? Well, I have... <laughs> Scattered books I'm missing, but uh, this is Legion of Superheroes 40 cent cover price. So, this would have been from probably the mid 80s, I'm guessing. Uh, Mike Grell cover art, he was the best uh, artist on the book at this this period. He, he's very much along the Neil Adams school of, of art, but I don't know that uh, they actually ever interacted other than just having work published around the same period. More Legion of Superheroes. This one is covered by Joe Statton and inks by uh, Dick Giordano. Legion of Superheroes doesn't get a whole lot of love these days. I'm not sure why not. <laughs> this looks pretty cool. Robin 3000 by P. Craig Russell. Very cool. This is what they would... Back in the day, what did they call this? Uh, not a Baxter edition, or was it a Baxter edition? But a square bound. So it's a regular comic, but you know it's a little bit thicker. It's got a square spine on it, higher production values. That's what square bound means as a square spine. Yeah. Okay. I'm all about educating. He is. I'm all about learning. Knock knock. Who's there? Who's dead? The outsiders. <laughs> Or outsiders, rather. <laughs> that appears to be the case. Judd Winnick and Tom Rainey. From September of 04. This guy's name is Wolfman. Really. This looks pretty cool. Tales of the Teen Titans. I collected this book back in the day. Is, is this first name Marvel? Marvel? Marv Wolfman. Oh, Marv Wolfman. <clears throat> Marv Wolfman was the uh, was real no, well known for writing the the New Teen Titans. And without going back and opening the book and reading and kind of studying up, I think this was. Okay, so here's the story on New Teen Titans. Everybody knows is that there are two New Teen Titans books where uh, the regular Teen Titans book that you would have found on the shelf, on the, the rack, the spinner rack at the grocery store, switched over to Tales of the Teen Titans. And for a year, it published new work in, you know, it, in this format. And, and the, the paper was uh, newsprint, but... At the same time, they started publishing New Teen Titans again, starting from number one, <laughs> in in a nicer, with a nicer paper stock, with a Baxter paper stock, mm -hmm. and you could only get it through subscription or specialty store called a comic book shop. Oh. So, so then, so after a year, once the the new stories in this title ran out, it would reprint what we saw in. New Teen Titans the year before, just on a lower paper grade and sold on the newsstand. Huh. So speaking of which, new comic books tomorrow. <laughs> I haven't looked. How many? Like I know last week was kind of like the trickle of new comics. I don't know. They uh, BMT hasn't posted their. That's how I find anything out. BMT, buy me toys. Our local LCS. I know if we were supposed to. Plug them or not, since we have a sponsor we now. Always plug our LCSs. I do, because yeah. tomorrow I, uh, apparently I have to go and get another short box. <laughs> <laughs> Who, 
Cartoon Network. Ooh, I like this. I like blue. <laughs> blue cover. <clears throat> but that looks interesting. Is that a whole series or Justice League Adventures? So this would be like the comic book uh, equivalent of the animated Justice League cartoon <clears> that was produced by uh, Bruce Tim. Like the, you've got the Batman Adventures and mm -hmm. Superman Adventures, and eventually they did, they did a Justice League in the same style. So okay. this would have been the comic book published with that kind of in that universe. Hey, maybe Disney can buy the old DC cartoons. Disney is not going to buy anything from Warner Brothers, I'm telling you. I mean, the Warner Brothers needs to get a network. Oh, I guess that's HBO Max, isn't it? Yep. <laughs> Who is the fastest man alive? It's the age-old question. Even though I did read a story where it said the Flash let Superman beat him. Of course. They raced a few times. Sorry, I got to check the... Uh -oh. check the uh, <laughs> name of the artist. This is a great looking cover by Rick Buckler. Or is it Rich Buckler? Might be Rich. But the thing I liked about Rich Buckler was that his stuff, the stuff he did for DC at least, when inked by good inkers like Dick Giordano in my opinion rivaled what we saw out of uh, Jose, Jose Garcia Lopez and uh, Neil Adams. Hang in there, Flash. I'm almost through drawing a new superhero to save you. <laughs> You're done for, Speedster. No one can stop me from destroying you. <laughs> Very cool. Drawing a new superhero to save you. Sounds like something you do. <laughs> I'm not that fast an artist. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know. I've never, I like that orange and black like that in Justice League, but... What, is that Doc Ock over there? No. Or is there multiple people? Multiple he is models? a member of the extremists. Oh, I keep forgetting. You know, I keep mixing my people up. Or mixing my uh, universes up. <laughs> so Maxwell Lord is back in this issue of Justice League America. This was a, a great run back in the day. Giffen and uh, Demetrius were the, the writers. This, this issue happens to be drawn by... An artist named, I believe it was Steve Wozniak. Not Steve. That's the computer guy. Yeah, <laughs> the Woz. Might be Chris Wozniak. But uh, he di he didn't have a huge body of work, but I remember him as as being pretty cool. The cover it's, the cover is drawn by Chris Sprouse, or Sprouse. I believe he lives around here in the Midwest somewhere. We've had some sightings. <laughs> the Justice Rangers. Justice League Unlimited, again, another <laughs> comic from the uh, animated universe. Very cool. Nice. A standoff cover. <laughs> Ooh, giant X-Men number one. No. <laughs> <laughs> it's just starting trouble, I know. <laughs> Pages, films, and plastics. Thanks for stopping in, man. We've also got the Hoosier Nerd. I'm not sure if we mentioned him before. And uh, Dave Enrique. Dave Enrique, the square bound edition was the prestige, prestige edition. <laughs> All right, so got another Superboy and Legion of Superheroes. Giant size, extra pages, probably a 48 pager. <laughs> Carried the whopping cover price of 60 cents when most comics only cost 40 at the time. Another Mike Grawl cover. I can't tell. Where's the name at? Well, sometimes they're hard to tell, but right here is pretty plain down in the corner. Oh. Sometimes they don't sign. <laughs> Another one. Another one. Another Superboy in the Legion <laughs> of Superheroes. And These are really cool, though. I can't remember this guy's first name. The last name was Sherman. He's another uh, artist that uh, had a very distinctive style that I, I enjoyed, but he didn't do a whole lot of work. He did a fill-in issue on Spider-Man here or there. And uh, he had his, his work kind of reminded me of uh, Michael Golden, who I mentioned earlier as the, the, the uh, artist on the NOM. But yeah, if you could find the work from him, he's pretty cool. <laughs> nice. Do we have anybody new something? Uh, Bonafide Comics, stop it in. Thank, 
Thanks for stopping in, Bonafide. Yes. Woohoo. We might and, have to and another Sherman cover. We might have to run this with what you against what you have. <laughs> nice. This is actually one of my favorite Legion superheroes covers. Really? Let, uh, let's put it this way: it's one of my favorites that that uh, Mike Grell didn't draw, <laughs> but that was got some cool outer space action. Good shot, of Superboy. Now, I'm going to just tell you, this guy here in the bottom middle, he looks like Cam Newton. <laughs> Which guy are we talking about? Yeah, the purple one. It's a little bit like complected for a Cam Newton lookalike. <laughs> the guy down there in the Legion of Substitute Heroes. Legion of Substitute Heroes. Yep. That's great. I was always, uh, hey, we've got a Man Cave comic stop, stopping in. Good to see a Man Cave. I was always intrigued by... This uniform on Cosmic Boy. <laughs> I've I've never seen another hero pull off a bustier, another male hero. Bustier take it all day on the White Queen. Cosmic Boy, I mm, I don't know. I mean, it defied gravity. I, I don't know how it worked. It's it's somewhat difficult to see there, but. I'll have to pull out and do a spotlight on Cosmic Boy uniforms one day. <laughs> the world's greatest heroes. <clears throat> the Justice League of America. This is from the Brad Meltzer written run. Radar in it by Ed Bennis. And this happens to be a Michael Turner cover. It's a great overall shot of the Justice League team at the time. Got some black lightning in there. Tales of the Green Lantern Corps. Core, sorry. Core. All my English teachers. <laughs> Tales of the Green Lantern Corps, annual number three. Yeah. And look at the, the murderer's row of artists and writers we'll find in this issue. We've got John Byrne, Garcia Lopez, Alan Moore wrote a story in it, Kevin Nolan, and many more. So that's pretty cool. No, Jim Starlin. Who's Collins? Who's Collins? I just noticed here that they just blatantly advertised for <laughs> the comic book to step in the character there. Forget what comic book is this is, but Batman 4 2 has <laughs> Collins and Starlin. <laughs> this is a, number uh, two, I think it is. Tales of the Green Lantern Corps annual number two. Nice. Who who have we got in, in this? Steve Englehart, Alan Moore story, Kevin O'Neill, Trevor Von Eden, he's a pretty good, pretty cool artist. Martin O'Dell, who helped create Green Lantern. <clears throat> oh, I'm sorry, Mindy Newell. Not Martin O'Dell. <laughs> anyway, it'd be it'll be interesting to see the stories in that one. But yeah, for sure. Oh, I'm happy. I I mean this is a great this is a great deal. I mean, um and that say how much I spent on it? It's it's between you and uh oh and, no, I'm not supposed to say it. <laughs> but, between you and Jack. I, I don't know if, if he wants to uh Oh okay. Good point. But yeah, I'm I'm happy. I mean there's a lot of great books in there. A lot of stuff I'm interested in, a lot of stuff I'm interested in learning about too. So there you go. So that's great, especially like I said, for somebody like me just learning. And especially this fits into me with you no know, just trying to figure out where I want to go with my comic book collecting in the future too. Yeah. So that's great. Yeah, man. I mean, <clears throat> there's a lot of Legion of Superheroes in here. Um, so I can help you out, you know, knowledge wise if you got questions about them. Mm -hmm. Um they They've got a, a real history. Okay, here's a here's a better shot of that Cosmic Boy outfit. Cosmic Boy Bustier, defying gravity. Where's that? Right there in the middle. Oh, <laughs> like they're a little ahead of their time with that uh, <laughs> that look. 
Dave Enrique dropping some knowledge about the the annual has an important story by Moore pertaining to the Blackest Night storyline. Okay, so Blackest Night was a storyline that happened in the two thousands, written by uh, Jeff Johns. It's a real well known Green Lantern book. So and that, that's what makes comics cool is when right. you have some random issue of Legion of Superheroes or something like that from back in the day, and an artist picks up on it. A, a thread from it and make something bigger out of it than it was meant to be. Oh, okay. Jack B says it was seventy-five dollars is what I paid for this. Okay. Or my wife paid for it. She loves me. Okay, she paid fifty. I paid twenty-five. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. Yes, thank you. I'm yes, and I'm looking forward to going through the AOK too. These are really cool books. My second one. <laughs> This this will be this will be a good read for you. I think it's interesting, a, kind of a future future yeah futuristic story of Robin. Nice. Hey Amen. That's the Green Lantern he was talking about. Oh, that's the one. Okay. Darkest night. The blackest night. Blackest night. Mm-hmm. Huh. I'm not the, the biggest Spider-Man reader, but I can kill the glare on that. It's kind of hard to see the characters on it with the the, the city skyline in it. Yeah. But that's just a wicked cover as far as the execution of it goes. Right. I feel like a that you belong to the city needs to be playing. Mm -hmm. Again, that's a cool cover. I'm betting it's uh, Simone Bianchi. Yeah, it looks like he did the art in all of it. He's got a, he's a Italian artist. And now I'm on the hunt for part one. There you go. <laughs> yeah, it's that's me. I just I can't have part two or something. <laughs> I know that's how people end up with like runs of bad books. <laughs> the West Coast Avengers. Yeah. I mean, for something, I mean, this isn't monetarily a, a big dollar book, but it's pretty key. It's got some important stuff that gets started in it. Well, and as you guys are, as uh, Alan said, it's uh, pretty underrated. Mm -hmm. It's something that should be talked about more than West Coast Avengers. I have a book at home. It's somebody, there's something else Avengers. There have been a, a ton of Avengers books <laughs> lately. It used to be, a, I mean, back in the day, it was Avengers. Right. And then all of a sudden, it's like, we're going to start the West Coast Avengers. Do all and, these Avengers assemble? Yes. <laughs> and now it's, let's create a new Avengers team every other month. So apparently, when this was published, Richard Ryder was no longer Nova because it's got an entry for Richard Ryder. This is going to the Marvel Un Handbook of the Marvel Universe. Mm -hmm. Just for anybody that's not familiar with what these books are, <laughs> again, you can oh, find Rocket Raccoon. You can find these in dollar bins, guys. I, I, there's a local shop here that's got them all. I'm just going to go buy them for my kids. Yeah, mm -hmm. Rocket Raccoon, the whole. History of Rocket Raccoon up until when this is published, 1986. Huh. Now, does that take into account, you know, when they change the origin story? Or do they not do that back then? They do that more now. I mean, there was a little bit of that back then. You have everything from popular characters like Sabretooth to obscure characters like Sabra. I'm looking for that's it the great lake of it great lakes avengers that's the book i have at home do you yeah the first appearance of the of those guys was in west coast avengers oh really yeah. it was part of that uh 20 number ones that i got <laughs> gotcha just trying to support my local lcs bobby toys they sold 20 number one magazine 20 
20 number one Marvel Marvel magazines for twenty dollars. So I was like, I'll get it. There you go. But where you go? Asking you shall receive. <laughs> yeah, I, I've had I made a few moderators before, but we don't have usually not that many people are live, so yeah. maybe I should be on the camera more often. There you go. <laughs> Oh, Juggernaut. No. <laughs> what, this guy? Sasquatch? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> Juggernaut looks like that, right? Uh, vaguely. <laughs> he wears armor. He has no hair. Other than that, yeah, they look alike. <laughs> let's see. Let's find uh, She-Hulk since she was on the cover. She-Hulk. Got, got uh, the Sentinels. Cersei, Shadow Cat. Remember when Cersei Lannister made it? When Kitty Pride was Shadow Cat. <laughs> there she is. They always pick the best artist to do the the illustrations for the, the main character image. And they had just a few random spot images. <laughs> so liven up the book. Had the whole teams. So we got Shield. Oddly enough, when we did the pop quiz about West Coast Avengers, I, I looked under W for West Coast Avengers, and they, they might have been Avengers West Coast by then, but I didn't uh -huh. find them in my copies of this. All the gadgetry of a shield, a shield agent. Yeah. yeah. Cool stuff, man. Yeah, I'm excited. Jack B, thank you. And yeah, thank you from for myself. Even though these are all coaches' books, like I said, I love just going through a sack of comics. <laughs> I really thank you for the AOK too. These are really cool. For sure. So there we go. How long did we last? 52. Right. Almost an hour. Oh, that's good. Well, it's still going to be a half hour. Yeah, me too. Oh, well. We had oh, a good no. time, <laughs> as Discovery Bay would say. Yes. So, all right. Well, uh, we'll say thanks for everybody joining us in the chat. Uh, it's good to have you along for the ride. We still got, uh, let's see who we got Jack B., Hialeah, Matthew Poe, Bonafide, mm -hmm. Dave Enrique. Pages, Films, and Plastics, Mark Knapp, hey, Jack B, you're good people. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Any last words? No. Huh? All right. Well, you know how we sign off. Remember, it's faith, family, comic books. We'll see you next time.